Hey everybody and welcome back to my channel. Getting myself together. All right, so today, today, today. All right, first of all, I just wanna say, let me tell y'all why it was taking me so long to get back to y'all. So I needed to go on a much needed fast and that included being off of YouTube. So um, I definitely am coming back with my videos for the devotional. Um, but today, God put something in my heart that really has been pressing me. And I really want to share it with you guys. And I pray that you are, um, you know, that you can agree, maybe um, touch and agree with this word. Um, maybe just put it in the comments and say that you've been feeling the same way. Or um, even just, you know... You, um, you don't, I don't know, whatever, any comments that you guys have, just put in the comments below. Make sure you subscribe and make sure you turn on the notification bell because the notification bell lets you guys know when I post a video, okay? So I want you to make sure that you're up to date with everything that's going on, everything I'm saying. You don't want to miss out on anything. Um, I'm not going to be necessarily posting every day like I used to um, because life is moving and I can't wait to tell you guys about everything. Um, but this is what God has told me about today. So... I'm going to read to you guys from Jeremiah 4 and 27, the message version, okay? And it says, yes, this is God's word on the matter. The whole country will be laid waste. Still, it won't be the end of the world. The earth will mourn and the skies lament because I've given my word and won't take it back. I've decided and won't change my mind. Okay, so this is a scripture that I went and looked up inside of my Bible app, um, just searching the word mourn because um, I asked God, I was driving back home um, last night and on my way driving, I just began to cry and I was like, why am I feeling these feelings? I haven't felt the need to really cry in such a long time. So why am I like really crying like something's wrong? Nothing happened. What's happening? And um, I realized that, um, you know, in my crying, I started saying some things in prayer. I started calling some names out, calling um, my son out and just kind of praying on some things. And um, I heard the word mourn this morning. And I said, well, who am I mourning? Because I'm not mourning a death. No one in my family has died, thank God. And so I was asking him, like, Lord, you're not telling me that someone is, you know, he's like, no, um, you're mourning you. And I said, I'm confused. And he said, you're mourning the old you, the old version of who you used to be. Um, that part is pulling away from you and it causes um, some pain. It causes some, um, some, some disruption. And so I was like, wow, wait, wow. Um, and I realized and even in my prayers, I began to pray things like, you know, um, I know that you said, you know, that these things were going to happen. Okay, so. Um, yeah, so there's just different promises and stuff that I was like asking God to <clears throat> bring back to my remembrance. Um, and I said, Lord, you know, um, I've been waiting a long time for some things to happen. And he said, Morgan, you're mourning you. You're mourning who you used to be. Um, you're mourning because of what I'm calling you into. And this, this other place that you used to be in is no longer going to be a thing. That person is dying. And <clears throat> I have to be honest with y'all. Because I'm a transparent person, you guys. know I'm transparent. Listen. I feel like people... When you when you when you when you hear it in the church so much, you know, die to your old self. You want to die to who you used to be to become who God is calling you to be. Um, it sounds so good. It sounds so good when it's being told. You you hear it and you're saying, "Yes, Lord, I'm dying to who I used to be. I am no longer going to be that person. Lord, please change me from the inside out. Let me not to even be recognizable." Okay. So in the physical, let's think about this. Um, when um, a person is dying, there is actual pain. When a person is morphing, it's beautiful to other people, yet it is painful to them until they actually turn around and see what the reflection is that they have actually um, come out of. A cocoon looks beautiful, but have we ever considered that it could be painful? Have we ever considered that becoming a butterfly isn't actually um, something that feels good? It just looks good. Um, and so this is what God was showing me is he said, you know, in this season, there's a lot of people who are mourning who they used to be. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm excited that I actually asked God 
you know, why am I crying? Because in the past, I would associate it with something and say that I'm crying because of this or I'm upset because of this. And then I would label it depression or label it something like that. But no, in this season, God was reminding me, no, Morgan, um, especially with Jeremiah 4 and 7, closer towards the end, it says the earth will mourn and the skies lament because I've given my word and I won't take it back. That was the thing that for me that struck me in this in this particular text because it says he's given his word already and he's not taking what he said back. That's one of the parts that actually feels good to know that God is not going to take back what he said to me. But it also is a little bit painful when you're becoming who you need to be because you understand this is not going to change. This is who I am becoming and there's nobody who can change it. And um, the pain that comes with growing um, no one is going to be able to change his mind. He wants me to grow and I've asked for the growing. And so now I have to grow. I have to become that butterfly. Although flying, when my, when my wings have been stuck so long, flying is actually painful for me to actually begin the exercise. Anytime we begin to exercise, anytime we begin to do something um, that our body has never done before, it's painful. Growing, it's painful for some children sometimes. Growing in teeth. I have a four-month-year-old son and seeing him nibble on his hands as his teeth is coming in, it's painful, but he's growing. Listen. So in Ecclesiastes 7.23, message version as well, it says, I tested everything in my search for wisdom. Now, okay, I'm going to stop right there because this is the part that I started saying to God. I said, Lord, you know, I've tried so many different things. This part of growing hurts. This part, I can see the, the moving of friends. I can see the moving of relationships. I can see the moving on, in the position of my job. I can see the movement, the moving and where I am um, with uh, social media, where I am with YouTube, where I'm just, I can see that there has been a complete change. And to be honest with you, I love who you are growing me to be, but I mourn for who I used to be because I know the way I used to think. And although those mindsets I don't want back, it's something about the com com comfort that I got from it, that a part of me is like, wow, I'm not her and I'm actually moving forward. But then what about what happened over there? You know, what about the people from there? I want them to know I love them. I want them to know I care. And so the morning then begins because it's like, okay, yes, this is happening. This is happening. And I have to accept that it's happening. And I got a little bit of a tear and a little bit of a cry about this because it's like, wow, I am not her. I'm not her. And one of the things God wanted to, wanted me to remind you guys of today, it's okay. It is okay to mourn over those things. But what you don't want to do is get stuck in those things. So here's the scripture that I want to bring to you. It says, I tested everything in my search for wisdom. I set out to be wise, but it was beyond me. It was far beyond me and deep, oh so deep. And so does anyone ever find it, that wisdom? Do we find that? Do we find that place where we feel like we've made it, where we, are, we got it together? Do we find it? So I concentrated with all my might studying, exploring, seeking wisdom, the meaning of life. And I also wanted to identify evil and stupidity, foolishness, and craziness. That's what the message version says. So while trying to discern all of these different things in your previous season, trying to be wise, now that you're stepping into a season where you now can identify stupidity, identify foolishness, identify craziness, it's one of those, it's a full circle moment. It's one of those moments where you come together and you say, you know what, Lord, I see that everything I asked for you of, of you in these previous seasons, they're coming to pass. So not only are you a man of your word, not only are you faithful, but you're kind to a person like me who has asked you that question several times. And now I see you performing on this word. Now I see you actually bringing this word together and I'm mourning. Why am I mourning? Why am I not filled with joy that I'm at the place of promise? Why am I not filled with joy that I've made it? Why am I not 
um, celebrating? Why am I not jumping up and down for joy? Why am I not running to my neighbor and explaining my testimony? Why am I mourning? What? And so there's something about discerning your tears. We have to discern our tears. Okay. I was discerning my tears in previous seasons of my current, my current situation. So maybe I'm crying because of this. Maybe I'm upset because of this. And God was reminding me, Morgan, no. Yes, those things hurt. Yes, those things. But those were my, my, the things that I was doing to position you, to put you in a place where then I could grow you so that you can actually begin to accept. You were actually able to accept who you are now today. So those things had to happen. It's not that you were crying about just those situations. You were crying because I was growing you and growth hurts. Growth does not feel good. No one ever asked me. This is what the Lord was saying. No one ever asked me if it felt good in a cocoon no one ever asked if the butterfly felt good when she or he first flew no one ever asked what it felt like to open wings that have been stuck for so long so here's my thing this is what i said i said i feel like i'm mourning and i'm reading something that i actually wrote and i said i'm mourning my old self you know, like Morgan, who you used to be, who you used to care about, the people you thought, the ones you cried over, things and, and things that you thought were going to come to pass um, and are now you're now walking out. You want to be an encourager, but in past seasons, you haven't encouraged yourself um, telling others to trust God, but feeling like you weren't doing it yourself telling. Um, I'm sorry, but and sorry, little bit. I'm becoming what I've always wanted to be and see, but still mourning the old me. So as I die, the tears aren't about who I am. It's about who I'm losing. So here's the thing. I just want to encourage you guys to take the time. Yes, look at who you used to be. That's okay. Don't get stuck there on who you used to be. But what I want you to remember is this. Who you used to be is who really wanted to be who you are now. Who you used to be is sitting there saying, wow, she is amazing. She She's a beast. Like she just got through that. How in the world did she do that? How? If they only knew who she really was, if they only knew everything that she has endured, like, wow, that's that's what the other you is looking at you like. But sometimes you what I want you guys to do is to really look at why are you actually crying? What are these tears for? They're not just because of what's happening in your life. They're not just because of what someone said to you, said about you, um, friends that you've lost. They're about the fact that you are losing who that person was when they were attached to them. You're never going to be that person anymore. You're never going to make those same mistakes. You're never going to have to do those same things and have those same lessons anymore. Why? Because you're not her. You're not him. You are exactly who God has called you to be now. You walked into promise. So when they walked into promise out of Exodus, the Israelites, when they actually made it to the promised land, they had to walk for seven days and then shout. Now, um, I thought about this after watching a, watching a sermon, listening to Sarah Jake's um, last, last night or this morning. And um, one of the things that she said was, we have to discern our seasons of walking and our seasons of shouting. Sometimes we got to walk some stuff out. Got to walk some stuff out. So as you're walking, you're literally going to begin to walk from a, a space of who you were automatically into the person who God has called you to be. But it doesn't mean that promised land is going to be the land, yes, filling with milk and honey, but that doesn't mean that when you get there, you'll feel like you're filled with milk and honey. That doesn't mean when you get there, that you're going to feel like that. There are still some things that God is going to break down gradually while he's having you walk into the promised land. And so as you are breaking down and becoming everything that he's called you to be, there's something about still acknowledging that you are not who you used to be and that is okay you have now arrived to the place where god can use you where god can continue to minister to you in a way that 
you can totally be everything um, God is good. Everything that God has called you to be. As, as we were just, as I was just talking, God told me to go back to that chapter. And I get to the chapter and the first thing my eyes lay, lays on is this. And this is the thing I'm going to end with because, I mean, God is so amazing that he brought me to this. He said, endings are better than beginnings. <laughs> Sticking to it is better than standing out. Stick to who you are today. God, God. I couldn't have put this better together myself. Like, there's no way. There's no way I could have done this. Literally, that is Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 8. Endings are better than beginnings. And they will always be better than the beginnings. And I just want you guys to understand and to know that he's faithful. And I can't wait to talk to y'all later. Bye.